Now we're going to do the second kind. Now, uh, it was interesting. It's actually very clever. I didn't tell you to do this, but when you went out there, if you were doing the compass radial survey instead of the, um, the plane table, the line of sight one, essentially this is all you're doing. You're getting some bearings, you're sending someone to walk off, and then on that bearing, you then get a distance. So this is the essential data. Um, I'm going to take this and I'm going to convert it into a radial survey. So um, just as when I was walking around, I saw the vast majority of diagrams were much too small. So if you're doing this one from scratch with me, um, do it at least half your page. You could even conceivably do your whole page on this because there's lots of information we're going to fit on. But I'm just going to imagine that's my page. Okay, now if you were doing um, compass bearings, I highly suggested that you send someone walking off in the north direction because that makes everything easier to orient. You don't have to, but if you send them off in random directions, you just got to make sure you keep everything straight. We do have north, that's zero degrees true. So I'm going to go from the center and I'm just going to draw that straight up. So this is my person who's going north. And they measured out 60 meters. Then I've got someone who went 60 degrees, and you can see I've got them listed actually a slightly different order from the order I saw. I've got these listed going in which direction? Do I go this way or do I go that way? It's clockwise, so I'm going to go 60 degrees. I think that's roughly uh, here, and that's going to be 39 meters. I'm going to keep going all the way around until I've done all of my measurements. So. Okay, now this next step I'm about to do is pretty much identical to the way we did it before. I'm going to look at my longest length, which on this it looks like is 70 meters. Is that right, Irene? 70 is the longest one you measured? Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to choose that and use my scale. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is, last time I gave you nice easy numbers, right? Um, I went 70 meters, becomes 70 millimeters, and that's nice and convenient. But sometimes you can't fit that onto your diagram, right? So I'm going to show you how it works if it's a little more complicated. Suppose I look at this 70 meter distance, okay? I put my ruler against there, and I can fit 70 millimeters. It fits, but I'd like it to be bigger, okay? It's in your interest to choose a relatively nice, simple number. If it's one to one, that's great. Suppose I can fit 10 and a half centimeters here to here, okay? Now, maybe you're not thinking 10 and a half centimeters is an obvious length, but if you take the number seven, and if you multiply it by 1.5, then you should get, well, what's half of seven? Half of seven is three and a half. So one and a half sevens is 10.5, okay? So on the bottom here, what I'm gonna write is 70 meters, in reality, it becomes, what did I just say? 10, uh, 105 millimeters. I'll stick, in, I'll stick with millimeters because um, that keeps everything whole numbers rather than decimal points, okay? So can you see, what do I do to transform this number into this number? I change the units, meters into millimeters, and then I also multiply by what number? What did I just say? 1.5. Okay, so I'm going to use that for all of them. Multiply by 1.5 to go that way. Okay. So this is a 10.5 centimeter line on my page. Then see this 60, right? I'm going to go from 60 meters, I'm going to multiply by 1.5, and that'll give me a new length. On mine, that should be 60 times 1.5? What's 60 times 1.5? 90. That's 90, right? So I'm going to measure a 90 millimeter line. Why do we do it by 1.5? So all I did was I looked at my longest length, and I want to fit onto the page, so I pick a length here that gives me a nice neat number, right? So if I could, for example, if I could fit a 140 millimeter line here on my page, then I'd use that, because I just double, that's really easy. But maybe your page is not big enough, you can't fit 140 on there. So I can fit 105 millimeters, so I chose that. 
it's still relatively easy to work with, if that makes sense. As a number, that number is easy to work with. So if yours was, say, 90 millimeters, that's the biggest line you could choose there, you could make it 90, I can show you that in a second, but I would probably choose 70 millimeters because then 70 meters easily converts into 70 millimeters. So you can choose whatever size you want. Choose an easy one. Choose a nice, easy number, and then it minimizes the work you're doing here. So if you choose 70 millimeters, that's 1 to 1,000. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so right. you divide everything by 10. Correct. Uh, cool. Well, you divide everything by 1,000, which was what changes the units from meters into millimeters. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now I'm just going to do the rest of them. So I said that this is 60 meters, it's going to become 90 millimeters, so I'll just measure that off. Uh, 39, I'll multiply that by one and a half. What is that? Multiply by one and a half. Someone tell me. 50, uh, 58.5. Yeah, so I'll measure whatever that is. And then I'm going to do that, whoops, all the way around. 63. Thank you. That must be this long gun. Okay, so here's my diagram. Now, that's where the plane table radial survey, the one we did by line of sight, and the compass radial survey, this is where they become different. Okay, The line of sight one, we don't really expect you to get any accuracy particularly on where the angles are. But this time, you use the compass to do it. Okay, So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at my diagram and notice I've made a bunch of triangles. Do you see? I had five lines, so I've got a pentagon in the middle here. Do you see the pentagon? Do you notice that the pentagon is made up of five triangles? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And in each one, I can work out what the angles are. For instance, have a look at this angle in here, the first one I drew. It goes from zero degrees to true to 60 degrees, true, right? That's what I wrote down. So, humor me, what's the size of that angle from 0 to 60? 60. 60. Just 60, right? That's the easiest one. The rest of them, not so easy. I went from 60 to 150. That's going to be a right angle. Like that. Yeah? That was convenient. I didn't know they planned to do it, but that's fine. Um, from 150 to 190, 40. And you should be marking these in on your diagram. Uh, 190 to 240, that's 50. And then what's the last angle? 240 has got to go all the way to a full revolution, which is 360. So the difference is 120. Okay, now we've got a lot of angles, we've got a lot of lengths. This part that we're going to do next is not especially fun, but it does afford us a lot more accuracy than just the line of sight. Last time we used the scale here, we just put our ruler up and we just measured this length. Remember that? And then we converted whatever. Okay. But now that I know an actual measurement, another actual measurement, and this angle here, which is also measured with a compass, in this triangle here, I can use the cosine rule. I can use tree. Okay. So let's label these. Um, Let's label these lengths, let's give them names. So I'm going to call this A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. So just have a look up in this first triangle. Let me, um, let me draw the first triangle separately just so you can see it, but we won't do it again for the rest of them because it'll take you forever. Okay. The first triangle looks like this. I beg your pardon? Is this going to be one of the topics that's on the list? Yep. Do we, will we have to, like, will they give us, like, cool. just say that? So I will show you the questions in a minute. Okay, so, can you see that this is what I've done is, I've just taken this one triangle and I've just ripped it out, okay? This big radial survey is just made up a bunch of triangles. Uh, which, by the way, is one of the reasons why we spend time on trigonometry. Pretty much every shape in the world you can break into triangles, okay? And I'm trying to work out this guy over here, okay? This is the cosine rule. I've got two sides and the, which angle is that called? It's the included angle. included angle. Very good. So I'm going to use the cosine rule now. Um, the cosine rule is 
It's like Pythagoras that's souped up. Do you remember that? So it's going to be 60 qu squared plus 39 squared. Minus. Mi very good. Minus two lots of? A, A and B. 60 times 39, that's A and B. And it's the cosine rule, so it finishes with cos of 60 degrees. How do you remember this? Like, practice. <laughs> it's just practice. Um, so, <laughs> by the way, there's a real thing here, right? This is what psychologists call chunking. Um, that when I think of the cosine rule, I think of this because I've just used it so much. And you guys will use it a lot, so you'll get there too. I think of this as one object, not as like 10 different objects. So that's why it's easier for me to remember. I just remember one thing. In exactly the same way that, I don't know how many of you watched, saw this video, but if I gave you a list of numbers, right? I want you to try and remember this list. Let me show you, okay? The list of numbers is seven, one, zero, two, three, zero, three, one. Now you can memorize that list of numbers. You can work this out. If I give you 30 seconds to look at it and then cover it up, I reckon you could recite it to me. But it would take some mental effort. Do you agree? Like, it's like, okay, I've got the numbers in order. However, if I just write it like this, you're like, oh, that's not eight different numbers. That's one object. It's today's date. Oh. Right? Oh. So now, hey, gotcha. Um, so now do you see, this is eight chunks. This is eight chunks, but this is one chunk. That's so much easier to remember, right? You're not holding, you can barely like, remember what you, what you ate for breakfast while you're thinking about this. But here, you're like, that's fine, it's today, right? So it's the same thing for this. With time, with time, this becomes one object in your head, as opposed to a whole bunch. But before you get there, just use the formula sheet, that's why. Yeah, how would you do that? Okay, can you help me out? Let's, let's work out what all of this is. Um, you'll get a number out, which is, oops, which is A squared. Can you tell me what this number is that you get there? Two Just go ahead. Say that again. Two seven eight. Thank you very much. Okay. But of course, that can't be the length. That's ridiculous because it's the length squared. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides, which gives me. Can I get one decimal place? Fifty-two point seven. So you have to do that for every single one. Okay. Now, like I said. It is not particularly enjoyable, but the way that you now work out this perimeter is you have to continue doing this all the way around with a new triangle each time. It's not fun, however, it is vastly more accurate than doing it just by line of sight because you can't have any confidence in your angles really with line of sight, you just have a rough idea, okay? 